Coming up today on Aqua Kids. Come along with the Aqua Kids as they visit Viking Village, a commercial fishing dock, and see firsthand the importance of sustainable seafood practices. Plus a trip to Cuisine on the Green, a sustainable restaurant. So, ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. everyone at home and welcome to another awesome episode of Aqua Kids. I'm Katie. And I'm Drew. Today's show is very special because we get to follow some seafood from the sea onto our table. That's right. Our first stop is Viking Village where we'll get to see where our seafood goes as soon as it's loaded off the dock. And our second stop is Cuisine on the Green, a local restaurant that uses seafood from Viking Village to prepare their dishes. Sounds like we have a fun day ahead of us. All right, let's head out. <laughs> As the Aqua Kids walked up to Viking Village Commercial Fishery, we excitedly looked around at all of the large commercial fishing vessels unloading on the dock. We even saw the Lindsay L, the boat that starred in the perfect storm with Mark Wahlberg, George Clooney, and John C. Riley. We then found Carter, general manager of Viking Village, who took us behind the scenes to explore just how fish got from off the boat and into the hands of local restaurants. A scallop lives at 30 fathoms. Oh. You know what a fathom is, right? It's, ooh, I do. I, I learned this in dive oh, class. Aqua kids, come uh, on. Uh, Isn't it like a rope? And you measure it that way? That's Mark Twain. Oh. <laughs> a fathom. These guys don't go by feet or yards. They go by fathoms. They live their life at fathoms. A fathom is six feet. Okay. He, lives, he lives at 30 fathom curve. If you look at the charts on an ocean bottom, there's a curve that goes up the east coast all, <laughs> all the way up to Nantucket. Uh -huh. And that's where they fish, on that curve. A scallop actually swims. You know, a clam has a tongue. They live in the sand. Yeah. They live on top of the sand. And when they swim, they, they push it down. And there's a jet of water that comes out each side of the hinge. So they swim like this. That's so cool. And they can swim pretty fast in short bursts. Right? I've never so seen that. I there's know. something that will eat this guy that he's trying to get away from. That is the most destructive animal in the ocean. Now, two weeks ago I had preschoolers here and they knew what it was. You guys are aqua kids. Oh, what would no. that thing what would that thing be? No pressure. Humans. No, it's not a shark oh, neither. Starfish. Oh. 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 The point I'm trying to get at is they swim by pushing the water out of each side of the hinge, which makes a natural opening for it. Have any of you guys ever shucked the clam? Pretty hard. I tried. Yeah. It failed. Start the grill up, throw the clam on the grill, they open right up. I don't even bother. Anyway, it makes a natural opening for them with this knife. So they put the knife in there and they detach the scallop from the bottom. They grab all that stuff I told you surrounding that muscle with this knife and that's why it can't be sharp because if it's sharp it's going to cut through there and then it slows them down. They throw that out the window. I don't have a window here. And then they cut it into a bucket. Small, medium and large. They can tell by just by looking at it. They do so many of them. And they do all of that within one second. So is this only in one particular season or do they do this all year long? I told you they have 25 days to work this year. Next year is going to be more. Last year was more. This is the lowest year we got. Wow. So Wait. says the government. So says the government. Because <laughs> they don't want them over catching and then they got a new yeah. seed coming up. Oh. And so they let that seed grow up. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. government regulated? Oh, heavy. And there's no cheating because the government made them buy an antenna that's sitting up there. I don't know which one it is. That costs ten thousand oh, dollars. Wow. That is never turned off. It goes up to a satellite, comes 
comes down to Big Brother's desk, they're watching them 24 hours a day. <laughs> so you can't cheat. But it doesn't matter. They work 25 days a year, they make a ton of money. Who wouldn't want that job, right? I do. It was really cool to meet up with Carter and learn about scallop fishermen. I agree. What an interesting job. Don't go away. Aqua Kids will be right back. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. We're headed back to Viking Village to learn more about another species that comes off the docks, tuna. Okay, we're going to go look at a tuna fish. All right. And there's uh, 12 to 15 different species of tuna fish. Hmm. I got a sample for you right here. Oh, wow. This happens to be a, uh, a big-eyed tuna because of the uh, stomach cavity. I should, I should get you guys another tuna fish to show you, but this is a big-eyed tuna. This is what the longliners want to catch. This is the most expensive tuna they can catch, better than a bluefin. Oh, wow. This is what all the sushi markets want. Japan wants all this kind of stuff. And, su and tuna is graded from number one, which is this, nine fifty a pound. Ooh to a two plus, goes down probably a dollar, a two, a three, and then there's a chocolate tuna, which means his skin is burned up, trying to get away from the hook usually, or he died in hot water, cooked all his meat, oh, wow. it doesn't taste any different, it uh, looks different is the only thing, it's not poisonous at all. Is it still edible? This is 9.50 a pound, a chocolate is 50 cents. So usually the chocolate wow. tuna goes to places that make tuna fish salad mm. because they don't care what the color is, right? Okay, sure. so I'm going to take a core sample of this thing. And uh, what is that? This is a uh, Japanese instrument. It's called a sushiba. Mm. And that they take a core sample from the tuna without cutting it. Mm -hmm. You can't cut this. The, gov the customer doesn't want it cut. They want it whole. And that maintains the $9.50 a pound kind of thing. So I go inside. Oh, wow. What color is good? This looks like. Get some pink? I keep, I got the bloodline there, but we want this part right here, which looks like the inside of a watermelon. And that's what it makes a number one tuna. So, what practices do you use to make this more sustainable? All our fishing is governed by laws by the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. Every single fish that we catch is regulated of some sort or another. The, uh, like I said, the bluefin is very regulated. Mm -hmm. This is not. The scallops is very regulated. The, this is a yellow, a big eye. We catch yellowfin mostly is what we catch. And last year, out of the entire Atlantic Ocean, that's the east coast of the United States, all the way over to France, is the Atlantic Ocean, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. The American longline fishermen caught less than 5% of the total fish caught. Wow. So uh, most of the fish is imported into the United States by foreign countries. And our guys, they do the best they can, but uh, that's how it works. It's called the there's a law, it's called the Magnuson-Stevens Act, yep. which makes us follow regulations to have a sustainable fishery. So we don't want to go out and catch them all, then they don't have babies, and they don't grow up, and then we'd be out of business anyway. So, okay? so it's really in the business's best interest to Absolutely. keep their practices sustainable. Absolutely. Like I told you about the scallop guys, 25 days, mm -hmm. they're not complaining because they make a lot of money. <laughs> well, next year they're going to make more money, they're going to get more days at sea. Mm -hmm. That's right. The One more thing about the longline fish that's very important, they only go out to catch these things around the lunar activity. Oh, why is that? Because they leave here with ice, bait, and material, gear, which is very expensive. Right. And they fish one week before until one week after a full moon. Okay. Because that's the only time the fish bite. Huh. Really? Anybody know why? I have no idea. Me neither. So, <laughs> if you knew, if, if somebody knew, you'd make a lot of money. But we live on an island that's a resort, and there's a lot of tourists come during the summertime. They couldn't care less what the lunar activity is when they book their vacation, right? Mm -hmm. We still have to supply all the restaurants and the fish markets with tuna fish. Right. So how do you think we would do that? 
put them on ice. Raw. We <laughs> import them from other countries. Hmm. Even though Hawaii is the uh, United States, we import them from Hawaii, from uh, Vietnam, the Azores, South America, South Africa, because the boats overseas are at least twice as big as our boats. Wow. And they fish during the daytime with live baits. So on those boats, they have wells that keep live baits. Huh. We fish at nighttime with frozen squid. And they, for some reason, the tuna fish will not bite <laughs> off the moon. Huh. So that's, uh, you know, so when a boat goes out for tuna fishing, sometimes they leave the stock $15,000 in the hole before they even start with bait, ice, and gear. Wow. They have a crew of five, and they go out for two weeks and do the best they can. If they go out fishing, and the boat breaks down, a crewman gets hurt, they lose their gear, they have to come home and wait for the next lunar activity. Wow. So yeah, they, make your money back. they have to be very careful about their crew, the boat maintenance, and that they're ready to catch fish because they only have one chance to do it. Yeah. Now I finally know where all of the tuna I eat comes from. You do. <laughs> Hopefully you're getting it from a place like Viking Village, which is high quality and sustainable. Aqua Kids will be back in a minute. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. We're headed from Viking Village to Cuisine on the Green to cook up some of the scallops and tuna we learned about. I'm hungry. Let's get going. There's nothing like seeing meals prepared from sea to table. After seeing the seafood come fresh off the docks at Viking Village, the Aqua Kids headed to a restaurant called Cuisine on the Green. The head chefs at the restaurant make sure that not only are their dishes delicious, but that they are also made from fresh, local, and sustainable ingredients. So how do you guys always make sure that your food is fresh? Well, we deal with the, one, one of our major suppliers is Viking Village. Mm -hmm. I go down myself, I pick out the fish, I pick out the scallops. Our clams are, are local, they come from about less than two miles from here. So we make sure who we're dealing with, uh, that they're accountable, we know where their products are coming from, that they're handled properly, hmm. you know, the temperature always, you know, maintained. Well, that's very important. And then we also, you know, we do a lot with uh, Jersey Fresh Farms, all different types of produce we get brought here to the school. When we were at Making Village, we actually saw them unloading all of the fresh seafood and the scallops, and now here they are. So, can you tell us what we're going to do with them? Well, we're going to make our signature dish, which is called Viking Village Scallops. Uh, it's a, uh, a dish that uses, uses all local ingredients. Uh, we use the Viking Village scallop because they're fresh. Uh, they've never been uh, uh, packed in any kind of liquid. Uh, it comes in a bag right off of the boat called a dry sack. And uh, it means that the scallops are dry. They haven't absorbed any liquid. So it allows us to pan sear them at very hot temperatures and get much more flavor than we would normally get if we used a frozen or a uh, packaged scallop. Right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is season the top of each of the scallops, and I'm using a sea salt and a, uh, a fresh ground pepper, and just a little bit of seasoning. Uh, these scallops are gonna produce so much flavor that we don't wanna mask it with, uh, with any kind of uh, commercial seasoning or, mm -hmm. uh, or anything else, because the natural sugars will come out of the scallop. A scallop is a protein. And when you apply high heat to a, a protein, it um, goes through a state that pr produces uh, uh, a very sweet, flavorful um, taste that wouldn't exist if you didn't have high heat, okay? Oh. So that's why uh, steaks taste the way they taste when they're uh, cooked at very high heat. So how long do you typically have to cook it? Well. These scallops really only need about uh, a minute uh, or two on each side. Really? Okay? So fast. Uh, they cook very, very quickly, mm -hmm. and uh, the object is not to overcook them. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some uh, chorizo, which is a, uh, a Portuguese sausage. Yummy. Okay. And I'm going to add a little bit of garlic and some uh, olive oil again. And this is gonna form our sauce. So oh. 
all of the uh, the flavor of the scallops. are brought up from the pan by adding the liquid. This is called the glazing. Okay? So now I'm going to add some uh, white beans. I'm like drooling. I'm sorry. That smells so good. <laughs> and now the, the white beans are going to cool the pan down so that we can add some of our uh, other ingredients and they won't burn. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we're going to add some uh, fresh Jersey spinach, we and this spinach. this spinach came from uh, a farm about 35 miles from here. Really? And uh, it's it's an organic farm, oh, wow. and and uh, they uh, they deliver to us uh, twice a week. So not only do you get fresh seafood, you get fresh. Produce from farms. Right. We try awesome. to we try to design our dishes around the calendar. Do you think cooking more sustainably makes the food taste better? Well, one thing that uh, cooking uh, in that manner does is that it guides you into using uh, fruits and vegetables and foods which are at their peak. Yeah. And uh, the the I think the biggest uh, uh, secret in cooking is uh, getting good ingredients. And Definitely. if you have ingredients right. that are fresh uh, and, and uh, at the peak of their flavor, then there's not a whole lot that you have to do to it to make the dish uh, outstanding. And they're healthier too. And they're much healthier. We're gonna start by using uh, our heirloom tomatoes. Again, local, organic. Mm -hmm. And an heirloom uh, tomato, also known as a heritage, is basically an original uh, version of a tomato. It hasn't been crossbred or anything like that. It kind of looks like a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, and there's, there's all kinds of varieties of colors, but the reason that we use them is that uh, they don't travel well, so mm. they stay local. So, so what good. we're going to do is we're going to uh, take some of the uh, red and some of the green and lay them down like that. And now we're gonna take um, our spinach. Okay, and we're gonna put spinach on both sides. Okay. And we're gonna start stacking our scallops on the spinach. And what, what's nice about this dish is that we don't have to really do anything to the scallops because mm -hmm. in the method that we made them, by pan searing them, they are full of flavor. And I'm gonna start spooning the white beans and the chorizo on the scallops. And we're gonna hit the um, tomatoes and microgreens with a little virgin olive oil and a little bit of balsamic. Ooh, and we'll just favorite. give it a little, little shot like so. And uh, that's our Viking Village scallops. That looks that delectable. Beautiful. So you saw the boat, you saw the bag, mm -hmm. and now you see the dish. That food was so good. I know. Using fresh, local, and sustainable ingredients really does make a difference in the taste of food. Here's our top story. Obama tackles illegal fishing in the United States. The day has finally come. In the middle of June, President Barack Obama announced a proposal to decrease seafood fraud and illegal fishing in the United States. Obama commented that not only does overfishing cause serious financial burdens, but that it also is extremely detrimental to the environment. In fact, global losses due to illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing are estimated to be between 10 and $23 billion annually. This continues to make it harder on sustainable fisheries, undermining both their economic and environmental value. 
Obama hopes that his new plan of stronger guidelines and stricter enforcement will be a good place to start. We hope for the best in the near future. I'm Katie with Aqua News, keeping you connected to our planet. Now back to Aqua Kids. Well, after all that food, it's time for my afternoon nap. What he's really trying to say is, we're out of time for today's episode. That's right. But learning about how fish and other seafood items make it from sea to table was really interesting. I agree. I never realized how much work it took to not only catch the scallops, but then shuck them, bag them, ice them, and bring them into shore. But in the long run, the process is definitely worth it because the food that you can make with fresh seafood is absolutely fantastic. Very true. But if we want to keep eating fresh seafood like that, it is important for all of us to remember that everyone can do their part to keep our planet green and blue. And so can you. So visit our website to follow us on our journey. And learn how you can come along with us so together we can keep the world and the water a great place to play and explore. And we'll see you next time on, on Aqua Kids. Kids.